power. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at the two mutos featured in Godzilla, the 2014 monster film and the first installment in Legendary's Monsterverse. I'm really excited about the upcoming Godzilla King of Monsters, which will see the introduction of Mothra, Rodan, and the mighty three-headed King Gojira, and thought that it would be a good idea to go over all the monsters featured in the series. I've already covered the skull crawlers featured in Kong Skull Island, and if you'd like to check it out, I've left the link below. With all that being said, the massive unidentified terrestrial organisms, more commonly referred to as mutos, were essentially prehistoric parasitic kaiju and the main antagonists of the 2014 Godzilla reboot. In the amazing comic Godzilla Awakening, it's explained that the term muto was merely a designation Monarch gave to all giant monsters as a sort of placeholder name. Similar to the Shinomura, which were the first monsters ever discovered by Monarch, the mutos seen in the film were giant prehistoric parasitic creatures believed to have come from the same era and ecosystem as Godzilla. Much like the King of Monsters, the creatures fed off of radiation. However, unlike Godzilla, who adapted to live at the bottom of the ocean and feed off of the planet's natural radiation, the mutos were actively drawn to sources of man-made radiation, such as nuclear warheads and power stations. The ancient parasitic arthropods were believed to have evolved during the Permian period of Earth's history, and while the majority of their species had died off, there were two that managed to seal themselves off in cocoon-like structures, enabling them to enter a state of dormancy for millions of years until their eventual discovery by Monarch. The Muto's bodies were covered in an iridescent, metallic, greyish-black exoskeleton. They both had orangey-red, narrowly-shaped eyes and triangular jaws resembling a hooked beak, with the male Muto having two mandibles in his chin, while the female only had one. The female Muto also had two pairs of forelimbs and a smaller pair on her chest, and was much bigger than the male Muto, standing nearly twice the height of the male and being almost as tall as Godzilla. She also had a pouch-like structure on her abdomen, which contained eggs. The male Muto was nearly identical in appearance, except that one of his two forelimb pairs had been modified into wings, which were long, pointed, and membranous, similar to those of the Petaurosaur. The creature also possessed long, slender hind limbs, with flat, broad feet, ending in two hoof-like toes. Their forelimbs all ended in a pseudo-claw form, being curved like a sickle, and when walking, the mutos used the front knuckle of their claws, giving it a hook-like appearance. Their main goal revolved around consuming radiation, reproduction, and survival. And unlike Godzilla, who had formed a balanced relationship with the Earth and acted as its protector, the two mutos had no regard for the death and destruction they left in their wake. The Mutos were durable enough to take barrages of both small and large arms fire without any damage. However, the attacks from Godzilla were shown to harm them, as the female Muto went down from the first atomic ray, which weakened her significantly. The Mutos were also shown to have excellent stamina and resilience. The male spent most of his time after hatching flying around in a constant hunt for radiation, and most importantly, a potential mate. In his final confrontation in San Francisco, the male fought Godzilla for several hours by himself, while the female built a nest for their eggs. The female also displayed excellent stamina, traveling from Nevada to San Francisco in the span of a couple of days. She also fought alongside the male in San Francisco, even after being severely injured from the attacks of Godzilla. Both mutos could use echolocation to communicate, find sources of radiation, and locate each other. They also showed themselves to be intelligent enough to work as a team, as the male was able to drag Godzilla away from the female, prior to them both attacking him in unison. The female was also able to quickly determine Ford's involvement in destroying her nest. The male was able to unleash electromagnetic pulses from his claws, which could disable all electrical equipment within a 5 mile radius, while the female could surround herself with an EMP, which performed a similar function. Now, there don't appear to be any limits to how often either mutos could use this EMP, and in the novelization, it's explained that this ability evolved as a defense mechanism used to prevent Godzilla's species from using their atomic breath. This purpose is never alluded to in the film, but in an earlier screenplay, it was explicitly mentioned that Godzilla could not use his atomic breath whenever he was near the female muto. As mentioned earlier, the male Muto had wings which he could use to fly great distances, and these also gave him a massive combat advantage against Godzilla, enabling him to ambush from the skies with a series of surprise attacks. This also proved advantageous in defense, as he was able to escape back into the skies before Godzilla could retaliate. Throughout the course of the film, both the male and female Muto were seen to possess immense physical strength. The male was strong enough to drag Godzilla away from the female without difficulties, and she was also able to toss Godzilla around a few times, despite his immense size and weight. The female had the ability to reproduce and would do so by laying hundreds of eggs near radioactive objects so that when her offspring hatched, they could immediately feed off of the radiation. 
as parasites. The females of the species prefer to lay their eggs inside the radioactive carcasses of other mutos, like Godzilla and his species. However, if no carcasses were present, the female would simply create an improvised nest by smashing a large hole into the earth. While the Muto's exoskeletons were durable enough to withstand a point-blank atomic breath blast, the insides of their mouths and throats were not harmed, and as a result, the blast of Godzilla's atomic breath into the female's mouth easily decapitated her. The male Muto, despite being able to evade all of Godzilla's attacks with his speed and agility, was also killed by a single strike of the latter's tail into a building which impaled him. I also thought it was important to note that the Mutos were excellent parents who were fiercely protective of their children. In fact, the two had gotten the upper hand on Godzilla and were about to destroy him, but the sight of an explosion near their nest immediately caused them both to abandon the fight, which gave Godzilla enough time to recover and charge up his atomic breath. At the same time, Godzilla is the king of monsters, and I'm sure he would have found a way to get the upper hand. Yeah, I think he agrees. Well, that's all for today, folks. Big thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at the Mutos featured in Godzilla. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.